Hi, I'm Jeffrey Stamson, Director of the Disaster Preparedness Network. Situational awareness can save your life. You'll probably agree with that statement, but like most people, you probably don't know what situational awareness actually is. Nikki Dare knows. She's a consultant, author, and speaker who will help you understand situational awareness and how you can practice it in your daily life. Practical situational awareness in a chaotic world. How and will situational awareness save my life? Practicing good situational awareness is your first line of defense and avoiding a critical situation. Now, when you hear the words situational awareness, what immediately come to your mind? Most of you will likely say exits. So hold that thought, I will come back to this. Applying situational awareness should be a 365 day in a year activity. It should be part of your daily life. Like anything else in life, life is 10% what happened and 90% how we respond and react. So we take control of what we can through prevention, preparedness, forward thinking, sustainability. So what is situational awareness? Situational awareness is the ability to identify, process, and comprehend the critical elements of information about what is happening in your environment. It is knowing what is going on around you. Predators seek out easy targets as their weak preys, those who are not aware and oblivious to their surroundings. We must take full responsibility of our own safety at all times. Wear that radar all the time as important as it is to be of your environment, known as situational awareness, and the things that are occurring and happening in such environment. You must also know how to handle the situation as they arise. But here's my caveat to situational awareness. Just being aware of your environment, your element, your surrounding, is not going to stop a situation, but it will give you an advantage, an edge over people who are not aware. So how many of you heard a concept called color codes of mental awareness? The concept of color codes of awareness was originally put forth by the late Jeff Cooper, US Marine Corps. Each color code corresponds to the amount of danger to which you are exposed at a given time. And this refers to your current state of mind and your willingness to take action, regardless of real or imagined threats. Now, these color codes are broken down into five colors, white, yellow, orange, red, and black. For example, white represents unaware, unprepared, unresponsive, oblivious, living in bubble. An example of white, that you are inside your home, going to bed, alarm is on, dog is fed already, coffee pot is on automatic for tomorrow, <laughs> right? You are going to bed, in bed, that's white. Yellow, this is the most common one. Aware, relaxed, alertness, vigilant. Mainly used throughout the day, I hope, as you wake up and ready to step out of your front door to your car and head on to work. Now you are in your transitional space or what we call open space. But wait, as you walk outside to your car, in the corner of your eye, you see shade something, something like that in the bushes. And also you looked around, you notice an unfamiliar car parked across your street. Your awareness just went from yellow to orange. Focus alert level. So orange is a possible threat assessment, planning to use escalate or de-escalate force. This is where you don't have enough data and you must collect more information. Therefore, you ask yourself, is it a person? Or perhaps is it just my neighbor's cat, again, hiding behind my rose bush? Or is that a guy sitting in his car just waiting around? Or is that a, my neighbor's guest? You don't know, right? So you have to collect more data. Now, after you answer those questions, if that is a shady guy sitting in his car, then your awareness went to the next level, to red. That is a high alert level, fight or flight. Now the threat is real. You are ready to act. Because now it looks like the guy opened the door and walked out. But oh wait, he went to my neighbor's house. It is the boyfriend. Then you went back again to yellow. Do you see how it goes? Now an example of black 
which is next level of color code mental awareness. It's blind panic level, comatose, combat mindset. Your mental line is triggered now. So in this case, it would be if the guy approached you with a weapon or something in his hand, with an intent to harm you. To survive means to be able to adapt, and to adapt is the capacity to change and to be able to navigate calmly through the emotions and panic state of mind, working through them with constructive actions. Yes, it takes training. It takes continuous training. It involves what we call survival mindset. Now, how many of you heard the saying, you are half as good in disaster situation or emergency situation as you are in a good, perfect day in training? Meaning, regardless of our years of perfect training, we bound to have our human elements during disaster situations, emergency situations. You know, you may ask any season first responders when they face imminent threatening situations, right? Repetition and training develops memory. Memory fosters confidence, decisiveness, and speed for making decision in a life-threatening, stressful situation. You can often avoid a self-defense situation completely if you make the effort to be aware in everyday situations. By following the steps, you can prevent a crime before it even happens. First, make sure you're watching what is happening around you and not looking at your phone. You might be able to spot a potential criminal just by what they're wearing and also their behavior. Stay away from people wearing clothes that do not match the current weather conditions such as heavy coats on a hot day or other clothing where weapons can be concealed. Then you should be able to tell what also they're doing. People who are wandering around aimlessly or monitoring certain places should be avoided. They might be on drugs or waiting to catch an innocent enough looking person who isn't paying attention to their surroundings. So if someone is very suspicious, do not hesitate to call your local police about a suspicious person, especially if they are just waiting around in a parking garage, things like that. The police will appreciate you trying to keep the streets safe, even if the person turns out to be innocent. I mean, really, it can usually come down to common sense, practical common sense. If people look suspicious, stay away. If people are doing suspicious things, stay away. Look around for suspicious people who may be working with one another. As they say, rats travel in pack. Take note of their genders, sizes, height and weight, skin tone, clothing, hairstyle, and other distinguishing features so that you can report it to the police. Sometimes you can prevent even more dangerous criminals from succeeding. If you see suspicious living packages around a highly populated event, such as backpacks and boxes, call the police. You should also be wary of people trying to access areas they're, they're not supposed to. This can mean utility closets, restricted areas, and rooftops. This is especially relevant if you work at a company or office and someone you don't know is trying to get into the sensitive areas of the building. You should also be wary of unexpected delivery trucks. Watch out for any unexplained smells or packages, especially ones near the air conditioning systems. Leaving this unreported can result in a lot of damage for the company. While it might not be an attack on the building, it can be a gas leak or other dangerous malfunction. Another warning sign for these areas would be dead animals concentrated around one spot. This means someone suspicious has planted dangerous chemicals and this should be reported immediately to 911. Going back to knowing your exits and backup emergency and alternative routes. In fact, as I always encourage people to be familiar with their back roads, emergency shelters, fire stations, hospitals within their 10 or 20, even 30 miles radius, where they both live and work or go to school. Learning situational awareness is therefore one of the most important skills you can learn in life. Your brain is a super calculator capable of analyzing multiple scenarios, reactions, and hypotheticals using the environment around you. 
and you just need to go through the easy mental cues and signs to analyze situation or problem. So let's move on. There's another concept I want to share with you. It's called OODA loop. It's a great tactical survival concept adopted by another military personnel, U.S. Air Force pilot named John Boyd, who came up with this strategic tool, trying to get inside your threats decision cycle and gain the advantage. is a loop cycle called OODA loop. OODA is an acronym for observe, orient, decide, and act. So observe, collecting and gathering available data, taking information about the environment, condition, and the threat. Orient, making estimates and judgments on the situation to create a mental image. Decide, determine what needs to be done. Is it an immediate reaction or is it a deliberate plan? Act, putting your decision into action. Your situational awareness will be informed by what your senses are picking up by applying your common sense. So here are things that I can suggest for you to do for your business, for your workplace, if you haven't done so. First, develop a task force team, develop your EAP, emergency action plan, and your DR, disaster recovery plan, BCP, business continuity plan, Train and simulate regularly with your staff members. Review, improve, and adjust your plan accordingly. Review, improve, and adjust. Review, improve, and adjust. Provide basic first aid training to your staff members. And also that includes offer refresher courses. And at home, what you can do with your family and loved ones is to play and create a fun situational awareness game. These are games such as what we call walking game or driving game. We can do this all day. Look on the street and take visual check in your environment from that one guy in the corner. You know, what shoes is he wearing? What color shoes, shirts, pants, hair, which street's name that he was standing, standing by, etc., etc. You have the ability to give physical description of that individual. And same as driving game. What kind of car, license plate on that car that next on the right, left, etc. What kind of driver was, was it he, was it she? It helps you tune in when to tune out. And here's a quote that I'm going to share with you all. Safety is something that happens between your ears, not something that you hold in your hands. Colonel Jeff Cooper, U.S. Marine. We may not be 100% prepared at any given emergency situation. However, through well preparedness and proper training, we may reduce disaster risk. All right, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. And my name is Nikki Dare. I am the founder of IDARE and Dare Education. Visit my website, nikidare.com and education.nikidare.com and connect with me on LinkedIn. Thanks, Nikki. These are positive, practical techniques that empower us to take control of our lives. Please let us know if you like this video by hitting the thumbs up button. And as always, you can leave comments and suggestions below. I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. You'll get more videos like this, plus exclusive content and access to free products and services just for subscribers. Thanks for watching Disaster Preparedness Network. We'll see you next time, and please subscribe.